Thank you, Nick. So we do now move on to the second of today's groups, one of our larger groups numerically, consisting of those breeds whose job of work involved livestock, whether sheep, cattle, or even, in some cases, reindeer. Our pastoral group judge started showing with Great Danes as a youngster. So the winner of the working group has been decided, meaning we have the first contender for best in show on Sunday night, known the Siberian Husky. Now it's the turn of the pastoral group to see who will be the second to go through to best in show. Frank and Laura up alongside me, 34 breeds represented in this pastoral group, so we've got a lot of dogs in front of us coming up. And here's our judge, Jeff Hawes. Well, he's obviously in a very happy mood because he judged the Siberian Huskies today and he's already provided one winner to go forward for best in show. He's now going to send us a second winner by choosing the winner of the pastoral group. Jeff started in dogs as a schoolboy. His mother was a famous breeder of Great Danes. However, Jeff's gone on to breed many champions in mini Chihuahua Dachshunds. He's also shown Greyhounds, Field Spaniels, and uh, so judging all January over the world and awards CCs in over 100 breeds. So he's one of the top Coming judges the in the country. The Laura, tell us about the breed, the pastoral dogs. dogs. These are largely the herding dogs, aren't they? Herding and guarding dogs, yes, that's right, Ali. So they're associated with working cattle, sheep, reindeer oh, and other cloven-footed animals. And there is the... <laughs> the Australian cattle dog coming in, the blue speckle, the they call Australian that colour. So the one thing these all have in common is that they worked outdoors, so they needed to be protected from the elements. So we'll the see a body. weatherproof double coat in almost all of these breeds. And of course, they all have to be fit for the function for which they were bred, either as flock guards the or Boceron. flock herders. The Boceron, one of the rarer breeds from France. The Belgian Shepherd dog. First of our four Belgian Shepherd dogs here. This is the Gronendal. The Belgian Shepherd dog, Lacanois. This is the rarest of the varieties, the Lacanois. In fact, just two of them here today. The Belgian Shepherd dog, Malinois. <laughs> Highly intelligent, but they need a job of work, this breed. And the Belgian Shepherd dog, Severin. The most popular variety, and that looks beautiful coming in with that brisk stride. The Burger Masco, winning from any variety import register. Now, here's a labour of love, the Burger Masco. You wouldn't want to get that coat wet, would you? <laughs> Border Collie. Coming from the biggest entry in the pastoral group, the Border Collie. The Briard. Really distinctive coat there of the Briard. The Catalan Sheepdog. One of the rarer breeds, the Catalan. The Rock Collie. Two judges to de decide best of breed. The Smooth Collie. Easier to look after and very athletic, the Smooth Collie. The Estrella Mountain Dog. From Portugal, the Estrella Mountain Dog. The Finnish Lappins. The German Shepherd Dog. Always no. a fan club, isn't there, for the German Shepherd? Yes. Crowded ringside watching the judging today. The Hungarian Puli. Again, the nimble, brisk-moving Hungarian Puli. Another of the corded breeds from Hungary. And which end's the head? That's what you need to know, isn't the it? Hungarian <laughs> Pumi. The new one here this year. First time it's had breed classes. This is the Hungarian Pumi. And doesn't look, look cute with its ears. <laughs> it does. The lovely dogs. The Commodore. Now here, not so much a, a, a hobby, but a way of life to keep a Commodore. Slow maturing. The Lancashire Healer. Oh, he's found something he likes there. Here's a Lancashire lad, the Lancashire healer. I love this breed. So workmanlike, full of character. He the might be smaller, but he doesn't know it, does he? <laughs> the Maremma sheepdog. Another from Italy. You wouldn't want to meet a muddy puddle with the that Norwegian one. Norwegian Buhans.
The old English It's a big sheep group, dog. this, but this one, instantly recognisable, the old English sheepdog. And this rolling gait of the old English sheepdog, that's a the breed Polish characteristic. They Lowland roll on the moon. And in a smaller size, the Polish Lowland sheepdog. Quite a few similarities in their cobbiness the and Pyrenean rib. The Pyrenean mountain dog. Oh, such a majestic breed, the Pyrenean mountain dog. The Pyrenean sheepdog, long haired. And this is beautiful, a Pyrenean sheepdog, windswept and alert. Doesn't that look gorgeous? The Samoyed. Always popular, the Samoyed. The Shetland sheepdog. Beautiful tricolour coming in. The Swedish Balland. One of my favourite breeds, so workmanlike, the Swedish Valhund. The Welsh Corgi Cardigan. The first of our Welsh Corgis. Thought to be the older of the two, this one, the Cardigan variety. And the final breed in this marvellous pastoral group, the Welsh Corgi Pembroke. Sable and white, the most popular colour in the breed. I'm delighted to hand you over in the commentary box. Well, the thing that's really Inland striking Sinatobiel about this group, Frank, is the sheer variety, isn't it? From the, the small size of the Lancashire healer to the Old English Sheepdog and the coat of the, the Commodore, the, yes, huge variety. Yes, all, all, all shades of coat and size, exactly. Jeff Horswell again taking his time, going round, taking the outline. Usually, if the dog's the right shape, it's got good breed type. Four varieties of Belgian Shepherd dog there, sharing the same standard but different in coat. And the judge effectively judges in three ways. So they, they go around and they look at the outlines, then they need to get their hands on to feel. And then finally we watch them on the move and the judge is looking at all the different directions that the dog comes in. And that's to, to really see whether their confirmation follows through into the correct movement for that breed. And then of course you need the one with the extra presence at the end just to snatch the prize, yeah? The cherry on the cake. And so we'll be looking to whittle this group down to a final eight to then choose the winner to go through to best in show. And he'll be getting an idea at this stage. He'll, he'll have a, a rough idea, but obviously needs to get his hands on them. So that's what he's going to do now. And there's an awful lot to keep in your mind as a judge for every single breed. I mean, how long does it take Frank to, to train up very briefly? Well, you need a lot of experience. You'll start judging your own breed, then you'll... you'll and here is the Anatolian Shepherd Dog, one of the tallest breeds in the group, developed as a flock guard in Turkey. It's thought that he descended from the Mastiff and the guarding dogs of the Middle East. Often required to live out all year round in the extremes of climate and develop great devotion to his owner. There were just seven of them entered here today. This one was our best of breed, not yet two years old, and he's a dog hailing from Lanarkshire. And he won best of breed at his first champ show, which is always a good indication of a career that's going to be filled with awards, isn't it, Frank? And we'll see that he, he's strongly built, good bone, but also athletic, relatively light on his feet for the size of the dog, and a strong head, and a thick, weatherproof double coat. And the breed standard talks about giving an impression of latent power, Frank. Yep. Now our group judge, Jeff Horswell, moves to the second of the pastoral breeds here in the group ring, the Australian Cattle Dog. Australian Cattle Dog. Which well, this dog is sometimes known as the Australian Healer, the Australian Cattle Dog, a breed with great endurance and strength and speed. They make good guard dogs. They can be pretty distrustful of strangers and very protective of their owner. is the result of six decades of cross-breeding. Now they're low to the ground compared to some of the other breeds in the pastoral group and that's so they could nip at the heels of the cattle and help to drive them. They used to be called the Australian healer actually and they were taken to the big ranches by settlers going to Australia. They come in, this is a blue speckled one, we also get red speckle. I've been to a championship show in Australia, they're very sharp, very sharp, they make good guard dogs, you don't want them to argue with an Australian cattle dog, I can tell you. Australian cattle dog. 1704.
And the next dog to be judged. Here we have one of the most glamorous dogs in the pastoral group. It's the Australian Shepherd. But don't let that coat uh, distract you. This is a dog that's bred for purpose. So it was actually bred, despite the name, to work in America on ranches and was later taken to Australia. It should be a well-balanced, muscular dog beneath that coat. And the judge will be looking for a really alert expression, which the handler will be trying to get out of them as, as we move here. In the latter part of the 19th century, Barbara whilst Shepherd most of the Australia, early dogs in the breed were blue merle, as this one is, they also come in red merle and tricolour. They've become a breed which is popular all through the dog showing world. In every country, you see good Australian shepherds with his great movement and very attractive colour and coat. Another young dog as well, not yet two. This one from just down the road in Solihull. And top winner in the breed last year. And the next to be seen is the best of breed bearded collie. There was an entry of 205 bearded collies this year at Crafts, and because and of this is the bearded entry, collie. The two judges today, and 226 of them in competition. And this comes from a famous kennel males. in France, developed from the indigenous working Scottish sheepdogs. And the breed was dying out, wasn't it, Frank, in the, in the 1940s, and something of an accident led to its revival. Yes, uh, late Olive Willison uh, uh, bought, ordered a Shetland sheepdog puppy, a working Shetland sheepdog, but the dog she was sent turned out to be a bearded collie called Jeannie. She discovered it was a bearded collie, became so devoted to the breed, she found a mate for it, for Jeannie, and it was that litter which formed the foundation of the modern bearding. Isn't that marvellous? And what about the length of that coat, though, because it's, it's long, I mean, look at it the way it moves moves but there's a, it's One important nine, the length six. isn't it but yeah it, it's an important double coat but what should be even more important it shouldn't be overdone with coat it should have some daylight underneath it yeah, underneath yeah, that well, coat which takes a lot of grooming the there is a lean today, athletic fit Hill, working dog of 24. best of breed was this dog number 2062 the Beauceron, as its name suggests, originates from the French plains of Beauce. Well, the Beauceron is a very loyal companion and guard dog, developed from the sheepdogs of the French plains of Beauce. Described by French novelist Colette as a country gentleman, and you can almost see that uh, in its stature, the way it stands. And seems to have a very good memory to add to his working ability. He's known locally in France as the Bar Rouge, which means the red stocking, and we get this by the rich tan coloration running up his legs. Very versatile, used in the world wars as a messenger dog in the trenches, and now used by the French police. This one, six-year-old dog, has been the top boaster on for the last three years. Comes from the Overhill Kennels in Somerset, Meg Pennell Carpenter, one of the pioneers of the breed in this country who from the 39 dogs entered here at Crafts, awarded best of breed to this male, number two, zero. Here we have the alert and intelligent expression of the Belgian Shepherd Gronendal. So this is the first of four varieties that we're going to see. Now they share the same physical attributes, but they've got very different coats, as you will see. They're sheep dogs and they date back in type to the Middle Ages. They've got attributes that make them a really agile herder. They're light and they're robust, but they're also quick and light on their feet. Now the four varieties all share the same breed standard, only differentiated by coat and colour. This, the Gronendal, is black, long-haired, and you mentioned it being alert. They're very watchful dogs, and we see this dog looking round it. It's uh, very curious about its surroundings tonight. was a favourite of Henrietta, Queen of Belgium, whose royal residence is the Chateau de Lecans. Now this is the Lekenois. This is the rarest of them all. It's got a wiry coat, thick, dense, wiry coat. It's got these eyebrows and, and a little bit of beard, which gives it great character in its expression. So under that coat, the head is actually finely chiselled and it should have a lively and inquiring look. The triangular ears are another key feature of the breed. They should be stiff, erect and set on high. And in fact, there are only two of these Lacanois in the whole competition. It's got to be the, possibly the smallest, I think, of the, of the breeds at Crufts.
The Malinois, we saw these in the arena earlier as part of the West Midlands Police Dog Unit. Uh, very well used by the armed forces and police in particular. And a real characteristic is that double pigmented coat where the tip of each uh, hair, uh, each light coloured hair, is dark and black. And and we've seen an exhibition tonight of its great working abilities. They're highly intelligent and they need a job of work. So people taking on the Malinois as a companion dog, they need to give it plenty of activity. It wants its brain to be used. It should be brisk and free and even on the move. Belgian Shepherd Dog Malinois, number 2116. We move on to the next of the Belgian Shepherd varieties, the Turberin. Judged today by Janet Phillips. The last of our Belgian Shepherd varieties, here we have the Tavurin, the last of these sheep herding and guarding dogs, and this one, as we said, the coats are what differentiate them, this one has long, straight and abundant outer coat with a really dense coat underneath. As with the Malinois, the coat is double pigmented, which means that the ends of the coat are darker than the roots. This variety descends from the stock that created the and, and this is beautiful. This has really taken my eye. That sharp, brisk movement. It's got this alertness about it. And it's got lovely proportions. It's almost square in its body shape. Absolutely correct for the breed. With that rounded rump and very correct in its tail carriage. That's a very nice one. I like it. So this is a four-year-old bitch um, up from Cornwall. And she was runner-up top pastoral um, dog in 2021. These classes were judged today by Mr. Paul Harding, and from an entry of 34, he selected his Burgamasco. And, and this is the Burgamasco. This is the bitch. What? This is, this is the Bergamasco, one of the rarer breeds in the group, an, it, an Italian breed, and of course got this thick, dense, matted coat, which comes in cords or mats, which develop as it matures. It was a herding dog, strongly built underneath there, strong head, again, they're watchful in their temperament. How do you stop that coat from matting, is what I want to well, don't. <laughs> well, it's, it's left to be natural. It's natural yeah. matting, but the, it needs some help to form it. As puppies, they've got these loose cords, which develop into these mats or ribbons, they call sometimes, yeah. Moving on from the Bergamasco, we now come to the Border Collie. Another popular breed with the numerically largest... And here is the Border Collie, coming from 212 today, and two judges, one to judge the dogs, one to judge the bitches. Here's our winner. The name tells us his origins, the Border Counties. And before 1915, he was really known as a working collie. He's an instinctive herder, drops his head as he moves. Lovely, stealthy movement, characteristic of the breed. We see them a lot in the agility ring, don't we, in the agility competitions. But they a wonderful family dog. They can turn their paw to anything, really. They're hugely versatile. And really popular. This was the biggest entry in the group today. This one just 17 months old, uh, this bitch from Hungary. Two judges needed to judge this group, Frank. What happened if they disagreed? Well, you call in the referee, and the referee for the, the breed is the group judge. He can decide which one he wants to see in the group. But it was once classified as the goat hair variety of the Beauceron. It has been suggested now the Briard originates from the province of Brie, so the area doesn't only produce good cheese. Look at this dog, the coat is very similar to a goat's coat in texture, a very sturdy breed, that's for sure. Now it's got some breed peculiarities, it's got double dew claws on its hind legs, it said that it gives it an extra toe for gripping in rough terrain, and the judge will have gone down the back leg and felt for the extra dew claw. The other interesting thing is that it's got a sort of crochet hook at the end of its tail, a little upturning curve. That's another breed specific feature, which see it beautifully carried there. This is another big winner um, from Yorkshire, but an international champion, a four year old dog called George. Barry Shot judged Catalan's sheep dogs here at Grubbs this year. And from a breed entry of 14, he selected this male as his best of breed, number 2507. 
Hailing from the Andorra region. Here we have our best of breed winner from the Catalan Sheepdog. This one originates originally from northeast Spain, and they still use there today to guard sheep and also to herd them. They're hardy dogs, and you can see that in this this rugged coat. It's protective, and they can sleep out in all conditions. And they also have that distinctive double dew claw that we just mentioned on the hind leg. It's a really important feature of the breed, and the judge will just have felt for that. You might think it looks almost like a Briard in miniature. There's lots of the same characteristics. Coat, balance, double dew claws, and this is going very nicely. Very nice type. They should have a smooth gait, shouldn't they? Trotting freely but with vigour. We can see that there. It looks like it could go all day. Yeah, said to be very easily trained, very loyal and alert dog. These are dogs that just need to be kept busy. They're not dogs for lounging on the sofa all day. With two judges, dogs judged by Mr. Mervyn Casling, bitches by Miss Miranda Blake, and best of breed rough collie was this. And dog there is the long, five finely five chiselled head and arm-shaped eye of the rough collie. The 152 of these here today. Two judges to decide, and here's the best of breed winner. A century or, or more of refinement from the working collies of Scotland has brought us to this. This long, wedge-shaped head, the beautiful, soft, sweet head and expression, and very important, a weatherproof coat, which should not be over, shouldn't spoil the shape of the dog's body. You should be able to see the outline of the dog's body. So this one, just 22 months old, another young one winning through in this group. Sunny, a dog who's come around from Newcastle. We can see on the move that should be light and effortless, a really lithe stride. And of course, so recognisable because of the American TV series Lassie. The kitchen was the breed judge today and she awarded best of breed. This male number 2701. Well, it was only in 1870 that there were separate classes for rough and smooth haired sheepdogs, so the smooth was considered the poor relation for a while. It seems a little bit unfair, but that might have had something to do with Queen Victoria, who seemed to favour the rough and brought some to Windsor Castle. But, but, um, but actually, the, the smooth collie has had a resurgence in popularity. They've become highly popular, great movers. Really intelligent dogs. This one a tricolour, which is perhaps one of the more popular colours in the smooth collie. Much easier to care for, Laura, in terms of the grooming. Definitely. I mean, this is your low-maintenance collie if you want one. They, they used to be interbred. In the 60s, they, you could get roughs and smooth born in the same li litter. another breed judge today by Graham Hill. And from an entry of 11, he selected this bitch, number 2723. Developed as a flock guard in the mountains of central Portugal, this is the Estrella mountain dog. They have some mastiff in their background, and there's a couple of key characteristics, those neatly folded back ears and also a hooked tail. Again, they've got some strength in them, strength under that coat, strong bone. Uh, this one. Now, this one's nearly 10 years old. Yes, and just perhaps, perhaps just showing its age in its movement. It looks a little tired on the move today. Very nice head shape, correct top line. Just dropping its head as it works, which is many of the working dogs and herding dogs have a lower head carriage when they accelerate in their pace. That's very typical of the pastoral herding breeds. And next out into the ring comes the Finnish Lapun. Elaine Short was the breed judge today, and for a breed entry of 82, she selected her best of breed with this male. Now, from Lapland in northern Europe. Finland, here is the Finnish Lapund. He's been found there for centuries and used by the Sami tribes to guard and herd reindeer. Finland has also been called the Lapinoika. It was recognized in the 1940s as the Lapish Herder. The new title was adopted in 1993. He's now the Finnish Lapun. Found huge popularity as the national dog of Finland and very popular as a companion dog as well as a good worker. This one really striding out there, having a little gallop. But they should be effortless, brisk and agile with that distinctive tail curled up over the back, which is exactly what we're seeing. It's another one with spitz characteristics in the wedge-shaped head neat and pointed the ears and the tail carried high over the back. Easily recognisable German Shepherd dog. Zena Thorne Andrews was our judge today and from an entry of 115 German Shepherds 
She selected this bitch number. Another highly recognisable breed, the German Shepherd, a herding dog, later a working dog used by police and the armed forces. It was used to be known as Alsatians, and the, the breed has changed appearance a little over the last 50 years. But a wonderful dog put to good use. We saw them in the ring earlier with West Midlands Police. Has been credited as the father of the breed. Now sent forward today by our top judge Zena Thorne Andrews, a, a devotee of the breed. Uh, apart from breeding wonderful miniature wire ducks, and she loves a lot of breeds. And the German Shepherd, one of her favourites. No breed has changed so much, perhaps, in the last 50 years as the German Shepherd. We used to call them Alsatians. And when I first came to the to Crufts in the 1960s, I saw three Best in Show winners. However, we've got new continental influences, which has rather changed the shape of the breed. So it's quite controversial. You're either like the English type or the continental type. And these as her best of breed representative here in the pastoral group. The Puli was probably brought to Hungary by the Magyars. Today's Puli comes mainly from a breeding program carried out in the 20th century. So it's up onto the table now for one of the no smaller breeds the in the pastoral group. This is the Hungarian Puli with that wonderful distinctive well corded coat. The so these are herding dogs which originated in the Far East. And as a puppy they have a looser flocked coat which later cords and the reason for that is to provide them with insulation and protection when they're out herding sheep. As a herder. For the flocks and sheep of his native hunter. Now the judge getting his hands under the cords to feel the body underneath. Underneath all of that coat, there is a wirily built dog. It's not a heavily boned dog, it's brisk and light. And of course, it's hard to tell, as Laura suggested, where, where's the head and where's the tail. They've got not very much neck about them. They've got a small, neat head. And the stand has asked for a red tongue. And we see there the red tongue sticking out to show off its breed qualities. And that long hair should be like an umbrella, shouldn't it, around the face? And we have this brisk stride. It's not a far-reaching stride like many of the dogs. It's so nimble, it can jump upon the backs of the flock of sheep and get, take a shortcut to the other side by going across their backs. Amazing to see. To the this one five-year-old dog from West Yorkshire. We've seen before in a group here at Crufts from the import register, but this is the first time they've been classified as a breed on their own. Now, first time we've seen this in the big ring at Crufts, the Hungarian Pumi. 31 of them here today, they're growing po popular here and they're popular all over Europe. It is closely related to the Hungarian Puli, which we've just seen. It's thought that they used the Puli blood and added a terrier input to give this a bit of sharpness. It's easy to distinguish now those distinctive ears are one of the real breed features, aren't they? It does make it look a little bit like a teddy bear, but they are upright and then the top one third is bent forward and, and the feathering on them adds to that teddy bear-like expression. And it's the first year of the Pumi having its own class. What do you have to do to get your own class? Well, it comes from the import register. We have an import register for breeds which are new from overseas in this country. They have to develop a gene pool and a population before they're given classes at shows and eventually at Crufts. But, uh, you know, make my, no mistake, it may look like a teddy bear. They're great workers, wonderful herding sheep and, and cattle, and very good at obedience and agility. Another Hungarian breed, the Commodore. The breed was judged today by this is the largest of the Hungarian pastoral breeds, the Commodore, uh, cousin of the Puli. The Commodore's a formidable flock guard. And just look at that densely corded coat. You could almost see that being mistaken for a sheep. Any wolf would certainly get a surprise when that started moving. That's it. That's exactly it. It was a camouflage. I mean, fancy rising from a... Yes, that would give the wolves a shock, wouldn't it? But anyway, this is again a way of life to keep a common door right. My friend, the late Anne Arch, who brought the breed into this country, had a famous one. She said it took three... Once she'd buffed it, it took three days to dry. So, steaming in front of the fire, perhaps, yeah? <laughs> So this one's a great example. We can see it's light and easy on the move, despite the weight of that coat that it's moving under. And, and again, they're a strong dog. They're strong skull and foreface, good bone and substance underneath. They were judged today by Liz Cartledge, who from an entry of 52 
Originally known as the Ormskirk Terrier, this is the Lancashire Healer. Now they're thought to be the result of crossing Welsh Corgis and Manchester Terriers, and you can see features of both of those breeds in them. But either way, they were designed to herd cattle. One of the distinguishing features is the little thumb marks that you can see on the front legs, and it gets those from the Manchester Terrier. Is said to have been the result. Certainly the breed is found in the Lancashire area. Isn't this lovely? So, so workmanlike as he struts his stuff. I love this breed. breed and long lived. Uh, the judge today, Liz Cartledge, uh, she's had these for many years. One of them lived to 18 years old. They're and great characters. I love the description. He was running around the farm, digging holes and hunting mice, which is exactly what they should be doing. <laughs> yeah, a really energetic, small but sturdy with a happy disposition. You can see why this one won best of breed. This one is a black and tan. We also see them in liver and tan. You know, we've had, you talked about the variety in the group, those corded Rastafarian breeds from Hungary and now this little workmanlike dog from Lancashire. Could not be more different. Today's Marimer Sheep Dog is the descendant of shorter coated. Now, here Marimer is the striking dogs. white coat and dark pigmentation of the Marema Sheep Dog. Coming from Italy, only eight of them here today. It takes its name from the plains of Marema, where for centuries it has been used as both a guard dog and as a herder. Centuries by shepherds and farmers as grazing land. We're looking for a conical shaped head that's quite wide between the eyes, and the expression should be of aloof awareness. Very so this one is a bitch, over from Italy. Beautiful, lovely light on its feet. Numbers dwindled a little in the UK recently. They, they, they did, and they, they, they lost their challenge certificate status, which means they can't become champions in England now, but they're building up again. Some of them were shy and a bit nervous, which, you know, people, they fell out of popularity. They're now rising up. And this one, beautiful quality. Yeah, should have a majestic figure. It certainly looks that way. The Norwegian Buhund. Now, Bu means homestead in Norwegian. And thus, this is the dog of the homestead. And it can, can both guard the farmyard and herd the sheep. And the Buhund is one of the earliest known... Nordic There's a degree of lightness and elegance to the Norwegian Buhund. Quite high on the leg, not heavily boned. It's got this athleticism and lithe quality to it. And we talk about spitz-like features. You can really see them here. So it's the wedge-shaped head, the sharply pointed ears, and that tail curved up over the back. And the outer coat should be close, shouldn't it? Harsh but smooth with a... A woolly and soft undercoat. And a lovely dark eye and expression there. It, it says they've got strong herding instincts and they say a boohund is never off duty. It's always alert. And here we have the old English sheepdog, harsh, shaggy outer coat and the most substantial of the sheepdogs we'll see here. One of the key characteristics is that crisp blue and white coat, but it covers a dog that is really fit for purpose underneath and designed for working flocks. Known as a bobtail because it was traditionally a docked breed. And it's interesting that in the 19th century, working dogs were docked and it got them a tax exemption. So it was a tax dodge to have a working dog with no tail. The other interesting thing about this breed is that they've got this big barrow ribs which gives it this rolling action on the move this one just three years old a dog from wiltshire called ellis and uh, one of the top champions of last year in the breed beautiful crisp coat texture we see this rise in the top line it's not a level top line it rises over the croup and then falls to the tail it should be strong and square looking with great symmetry and and they have this wonderful hollow bark when they ring. Okay, it's like a, a, you know, it's wonderful Good. echoing bark. Yeah, one of the breed characteristics. But not performing today. And he chose this dog 3200 to be best of breed. As the breed name implies, the country of origin is Poland. Now here is the Polish Lowland Sheepdog, 29 of them here today. And this goes back to the 15th century. The early Polish herding dogs formed the ancestry of this. Came to the UK, uh, some of them came to Scotland, and it's thought that they played a part in developing the old English Sheepdog, which we've just seen. Smaller version, but a lot of the same qualities. And it's important, isn't it, that this long, shaggy coat, yes, it covers the whole body, but it should never impede the dog's ability to move smoothly or indeed cover the eyes so it can't see. 
and of course it should frame it should cover the frame of the dog there should be some daylight in it it has to also be a functional protective weatherproof coat the next of our classical best of breeds to be seen is the Pyrenean Mountain Dog. Oh, this is a tall, imposing, yet elegant breed, the Pyrenean Mountain Dog. It's one of the tallest of the pastoral breeds, and it was guarding flocks in the Pyrenees in the Middle Ages and became popular with the nobility. King Louis XIV called him the Royal Dog of France. One of the great white guarding mastiffs. This one is a two year old dog described as a true gentle giant with personality to match. Now, it's a breed which needs not only some substance but also a degree of elegance. They shouldn't be over heavy, they were flock guards. And again, it was a camouflage dog, a big white dog amongst the sheep, could give the wolves a nasty shock. But also, this beautiful head, the shape of the head, almost like a, a, a bear like head with beautiful dark eyes. One of the things about the breed is that when it's fully alert, the tail comes right over the back, called making the wheel. It's another dog with double dew claws on its hind legs, which you can see as it comes towards us. The Pyrenean Sheepdog, the long-haired Pyrenean Sheepdog. The breed had an entry of 12, which were judged today by Keith Baldwin. There were just 12 of these long-haired Pyrenean Sheepdogs here today, and this one was the best of breed. It was recognised by the Kennel Club as a breed in 1926, but dates back much further than that. Almost every valley in the Pyrenees had its own type of pastoral uh, herding dog, with just small variations between them. They're said to have a very strong herding instinct. And I love this. This is a beautiful example of the breed. I believe it's been to France and won championships in France, which takes some doing. The breed has a lovely windswept quality to it. It's light on its feet, alert, beautiful, beautiful quality there. And you see that as another code which cords naturally there. I love this. This one, nine years old, but you would never know watching her move. Beautiful breed type. And the hair on the muzzle, shorter and growing away from the nose and the eyes. Looks like they've got the hair dryer on them. <laughs> the Samoy takes its name from the tribe which developed it, developed it, the Samoyeds from northern Siberia. And its main function was to be a reindeer herder. But he was also used for sledge pulling, so great versatility. Nomadic tribes of Siberia. The breed standard talks about the breed having a smiley expression on the face and just look, it goes round the ring, loving it. We call them the Smiling Sam, Smiling Sam. Dark pigmentation, they, they, they've got fit for function. We look at their feet, they're called snowshoe feet to give them static stability on the ice and snow rather flatter than a lot of dogs' feet, yes? And that powerful wedge-shaped head could show real power and elegance. This one moving out beautifully, four-year-old bitch. And they needed two judges, dogs by Barbara Thornley and bitches by Mrs. Miley Thomas. Now, this is a small-sized dog, rather fitting for the small size of the Shetland Isles, the Shetland Sheep Dog. When it was first shown at Crufts in 1906, it was shown as a miniature collie, but there are some subtle differences. An area that lays claim to a number of animals which are small in stature. The Beautiful outline. May be the result of crossing in this is a breed which should be light and easy on the move, covering the ground, ground lightly, smooth. The head should be carried proudly, shouldn't it? Which we can see there, that elegant expression. It should be fully in proportion, you that abundant coat and mane. You mentioned differences with the collie. It's a sort of wider skull, different head type to the collie, not as refined, but should be full of quality. Lovely outline, smooth outline, rounded over the croup and the tail carried low. Marion Sargent was the re-judge for Swedish Balkans here at Crafts 22. And from an entry of 31, Marion selected this bitch. Number Here we have the characteristic four, harsh close coat of the Swedish Valhund. Now the heritage of this breed is often debated. Valhund they have some resemblance to the Corgis. Some say Viking raiders took Welsh healers home with them. Others claim the reverse. Either way, they almost became extinct in the 30s, but were saved by a really intense breeding program. 
likely that the multi And it's another of the breeds that I love because it's sheer work, workmanlike in its look and appearance and the way it carries itself. One of the interesting features of the breed are the harness markings we see just behind the shoulders. We see the lighter hair, they call those harness markings. Now, they used to be, they can be born with natural bobtails, docking no longer allowed, and the breeders developed the gene for producing natural bobtails, but this one has the full length tail carried over the back. This one moving really nicely. Beautiful dark eyes. It should have some ground clearance, not be too low to the ground. It has to cover lots of rough terrain in its work. From an entry of 66, Cardigan Welsh Corgis. Some authorities say that and on the table now, the Brindlin White Welsh Cardigan Corgi. It was the first of the two breeds, the Cardigan and the Pembroke, which we'll see in a moment. They have the same root stock, but however, this is the longer dog. The longer dog, it said it used to be called the yard dog in Wales because it used to measure a, a Welsh yard from t nose to tail. For the cardigan thought to be the older of So this one, breeds. nine years old, actually the breed record holder. So we talked earlier about the boxer having 134 cc's. This dog, 52 cc's to its name. That's some pedigree, isn't it, Frank? It certainly is. He's had a great career and still looking very good as a veteran. It's called Mr. Blobby, which Mr. Blobby, which is not really a, a name for the breed record holder, is it? He's a very smart brindle and white. And his pet name is indeed Blobby. <laughs> Strongly boned, the, the front legs of the cardigan corgi curve round the deep chest. So the pastoral group, we see the Pembroke Welsh corgi. These were judged today by Mrs. Annalee Sutella. The Welsh corgi Pembroke is very well known and popular due to its royal connection, of course. It's smaller than the cardigan, it's shorter in body as well. It's a very low set, sturdily built dog for its purpose, very bold and, and purposeful indeed. So this one just three, but already 15 cc's to her name. We should be free and active on the move, with the forelegs not lifting too much off the ground. This one, a sable and white. Again, we should have some ground clearance. Again, they need to cover the ground. You don't want them too low to the ground. Of course, the, the breed has benefited by royal patronage. Her Majesty the Queen had her first corgi in 1933 called Dookie. And of course, she's supported the breed ever since. So I hope she'll appreciate this one. I'm sure yes, she's watching. Yes, yes. Now the judge going round, looking at the lineup of all the breeds before he makes his shortcut to eight dogs for the final of this group. So just no. taking one last look. It's a big group, uh, so it's a lot, isn't it, to whittle down to eight? And I think it's going to be a hard group to get down to eight because there's some very good dogs in it, full of concentration, Jeff. The Briard's looking lovely. Well, Samoyed. Samoyed looked well in the smooth collie, and I love yes. the, the, the Pyrenean sheepdog, gorgeous. And the, the Belgian shepherd dog, the Tarurun, looking beautiful. First so we've got that Australian, Australian, Australian Shepherd coming out there. Down past the Belgian Shepherds. The Tavuran does come out, the very good, a beautiful, dog. beautiful Tavuran. quality. And the Border Collie coming forward now. The Border Collie. Past the Smooth Collie. Here comes the Finnish Lapund. And the Pooley. Hungarian Pooley, briskly striding to the centre of the ring. <laughs> Here's the Norwegian Buhund, the light, Buhund. leggy, elegant Norwegian Buhund. And there is the Pyrenean Sheepdog with his wonderful windswept quality sheepdog. coming into the middle. And, and a beautiful and the Samoyed. Samoyed. Absolutely. Now, and finally, and finally it's the Pembroke, Pembroke Corgi comes forward. So was another Young bitch there. And we have nine, nine here. There's always one that can't stick to the eight, isn't there? <laughs> I, 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 no, but, but I said it would, to choose from. It, would, it, would be a, it would be a hard one to get down to eight, and uh, that's, that's proven true here. Now, we'll see the same pattern 
moving them up and down. So what sort of features, Frank, might just sway the judge's mind at this stage? Well, really, you, you'll go for the one which you think is closest to the breed standard. But, you know, at this level, they should be all pretty close to their breed standard. Performance and movement at this level, showmanship, which gives the dog a bit of extra presence. Now, this very smart, beautiful coat, colour, and very free striding. So this is Viking, a 19-month-old dog from just down the road in Solihull and really has that ring presence. And although he's 19 months old, he's done a lot of winning already and uh, was placed in the finals of the champion stakes recently. Top pastoral dog, all breeds from last year. And the next dog to move out is the and here's this beautiful Tavura. striding Tavura. I think this is gorgeous. It's just the right shape, that lovely rounded croup, the tail carried low, and this alertness and beautiful coat. I like this very much indeed. And that movement is exactly as it should be, isn't it? Light, but looks like yeah. it could go all this, day. I'm, I'm leaning towards this. The more I look at it, the more I like it. So, uh, yes. Frank has spoken. <laughs> Frank's old. It's a four-year-old four year bitch, this called Charlotte. Which Next up, this was the biggest entry in the group and it's the Border Collie, always popular. Just 17 months old, this bitch, and here from Hungary to compete today. Uh, she's won a Junior World winner, Junior European winner. And, well, well, you know, it's, that's some journey to make in, you know, in, in modern days from Hungary. Born to be a show dog, according to her owner. Easy striding, look at the loose lead, the dropped head, so characteristic, this stealthy gait, which is what we look for in the Border Collie. And the next of our shortlist to move is the finished Lapland. Here we have the finished two, Lapland, seven, next seven, of our shortlist. Seven, this is the dog that's evening, nine years old short. and here from Norway and today. Big winner, also won uh, Best of Breed here at Crufts in 2020. And this one is said to be very versatile, both a working dog and a show That's dog. That's fantastic, fit for function, yeah. Indeed. Best of Breed, number 277. The breed standards asked the dogs to be fit for the job for which they were developed, fit for function dogs, and he, particularly in this group, the, the pastoral, gr the no, pastoral group. The and here is another one, the brisk the action two, nine, six, of the Hungarian Pooley. That corded coat, such a distinctive 39. feature, isn't it? You can tell the work that's gone into getting that dog looking this good. They, they should be short and compact, this level Long top line, the tail carried high, move. and again, that Two tongue nine, sticking out to show it's the right colour. They're strongly pigmented in the mouth as well. They've got lots of breed peculiarities which the breeders and, and the judges look for. Here we have this the Norwegian Boho, so four-year-old dog here from Manchester and has won best of breed here at Crufts three times. So will he go one step further today? Very alert, watchful, never off duty. As I said before, the uh, Boho uh, is never off duty. That's the Norwegian Boho, number 3059. It's been a long day and these dogs are still moving brilliantly, aren't they, Frank? Putting on a great show. They've all come uh, through there. This no, breed, one of my favourites. It's a, just a, a gorgeous sure. example of the breed. Okay. It's a rare breed, but that doesn't mean to say forward. it can't be a great one. And this is a beautiful, beautiful bitch. Number is 3285. En Sorcelle, a very nice French name. It comes from Yorkshire, not so far from me, actually. <laughs> so this is the Pyrenean long-haired sheepdog. Nine-year-old, called Blue. And a complete diva is how uh, she has been described by her own. Well, she deserves to be. She's so beautiful. <laughs> so. <laughs> and the Samoy the then, yes. From the Arctic regions, just that wonderful coat and smooth movement. I love this dog. Oh, it's actually a bitch four years old. Here from Bradford. <laughs> Very strong movement in the rear, really using its hocks. Very alert, and that beautiful dark pigmentation of the lips, the nose, and those dark eyes standing out against that ice white coat. Gorgeous. The big flat feet like those snowshoes. And, smi and smiling, and smiling. And then the last of our shortlist, we have the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. This is three-year-old bitch, here from Essex today, and she's won 15 cc's before and was top dog in the breed last year. And I think she's got some American blood. American, America have very good corgis, and I think this kennel brought in some American bloodlines, and this is one of the products of it. And could she win for the Jubilee year? Ah, right, yes, indeed.
but I don't think that will be influencing the judge. No, at this I level. don't. <laughs> now, well, it's a very nice line of nine. So he obviously thought it was a tough group. Got them down to nine. Where's he going to Who go? Who are you thinking, Frank? He's very decisive, Jeff. He'll, um, he'll have some idea now. Well, I just love the Tavurin. That looks copybook for the breed. I love the Pyrenean Sheepdog. It's, but there's other very good dogs there. Anything could take it at this level. But where is Jeff going to go? The boards are out. Oh, Where's the handshake back. going? I think it's going to be that Border it's Collie. Border Collie Beautiful from Hungary. Beautiful Border Collie over and from of, Hungary. And a look of disbelief all the way from Hungary. This Border Collie, how marvellous. So this is Lenor, 17-month-old bitch, over from Hungary. A junior world winner, a junior European winner. And, and now it's best it's of And group. second place is the Pembroke Corgi. Now, for Route third, three, the, the Finnish, Finnish Lapp Hund. And who will take the last place? Ah, the Hungarian Puli. Beautiful so, Hungarian Puli. So, a handshake to the others who made the final cut. Very nice dogs. So I was completely wrong there. <laughs> so they, I'm, I was the ringside it's judge there. It's allowed to happen occasionally. Yes. <laughs> so Wonderful to see the border collie going through. Yeah. And just that look of sheer amazement. Uh, and and, and marvellously work, workmanlike. Hello. Would you mind turning around and face this beautiful audience for us? Congratulations on this amazing win. You looked completely shocked. Thank you very much. I'm so happy and so glad. And uh, it was a long way from Hungary because we came from Hungary and it's worth it. Absolutely was it worth yeah. it. So yeah. there was a huge entry of Border Collies today yes. and there was a massive round of applause when you won as well yeah. today in the breed rings. Can you put into words just what it feels feels for you today and this big win? Oh, I can't believe and can't describe how I'm feeling myself. Uh, she's still young, but, but she loves showing. She loves dog show. So thank you once again, everyone who think so high of her. Well, we're going to see you back here on Sunday. Yes. What's going to happen to your travel plans now? So, yes, I have to change my travel the plans back home. Group here across 2022. Well, we're going to see you on Sunday. It's we a Border Collie, not even two years old yet. Gentlemen, bitch from Hungary, Lenore. The group winner, the Border Collie. And what a wonderful oh speech she made. Gosh. Obviously overcome by the victory, winning at Crufts all the way from Hungary. That's some journey to make in these troubled times. That's fantastic victory. And she said that Lenore really enjoys showing and you could tell there that very interested in the crowd while the interview was Absolutely going on. Absolutely unfazed by the moment, yep. So. That goes through to Best in Show, joins the Siberian Husky who won through from the working group earlier on this evening. So that was a, a Kayla, five and a half year old and now 17 month old Sem goes through. And then I overcome with emotion, the, the handler, when she, she uh, shot the disbelief in her face when she, the judge walked towards her. That's great. This goes to show what a huge deal Crufts is and the international reputation that it has. Oh, little, little kiss there, just to say well done. So she'll have to stay on till Sunday to come back, but I don't so suppose she'll be bothered so much about that, staying for Best in Show. It's time for the lap of honour. I'm sure they're going to float around the ring here. Well, it was a big group to be judged by Jeff Horswell. And he whittled it down to a final of nine, which showed that he was having trouble deciding. And then the winner being Lenore the Border Collie. judging today and I thank you all for staying on to spectate on the group.